Good morning and a very warm welcome. You're watching Janata Television and this is the English Bulletin with me, Sushan Dakal. The top stories first. Government to enforce prohibitory order in Kathmandu Valley, all but essential services to be shot until May 5th. All to you exams postponed until further notice. Exams to be held after things return to normalcy. Government confirms over 3,400 new cases of coronavirus. Number of active cases rises above 22,000. World reacts to India's catastrophic COVID surge. Leaders pledge medical aid to the country. And Ivanovich investigated in betting probe. The striker breaks UEFA rule. And now the news in detail. The government has enforced a prohibitory order in Kathmandu Valley, bringing all but essential services to a halt. The order will come into effect from this Thursday in an attempt to curb the spread of coronavirus infection that has spiralled in the past few weeks. A joint meeting of the chief district officers of Kathmandu, Bhaktapur and Lalitpur yesterday decided to shut down everything except essential services and transport. As per the decision, the prohibitory order will remain in force until May the 5th. All gatherings, including seminars, conference, entertainment centres, Parlours, gyms, sports activities, library, museum and zoo will remain closed. In case of marriage function, a maximum of 15 people can take part in it. Only vehicles carrying essential goods, ambulance and used by health workers and security persons will be allowed. Government vehicles will require permits issued by the concerned ministry or department. Groceries will be allowed to open until 10 in the morning and 5 to 7 in the evening. However, the prescribed health protocol needs to be followed. During this period, anyone entering Kathmandu Valley will have to stay on quarantine and home isolation as prescribed by the concerned local level. The Trivan University has postponed all its examinations. A meeting of the TU Office of the Controller of Examinations yesterday decided to postpone the examinations that were scheduled to begin from today. As lockdown and prohibitory orders have been enforced in various parts of the country to stem the spread of the second wave of coronavirus, it was not possible to hold examinations at present, said examinations controller Pusparat Josie. The examinations will be held at a later date after things get normal. The TU was scheduled to hold annual examinations of graduate and postgraduate level second year starting from this week. Nepali Congress President Sherbadur Deoba has demanded the incumbent government to make every possible effort to contain the spread of the second wave of COVID-19. In a press statement issued yesterday, Deoba has urged the government to be serious towards keeping the morale of frontline health workers high and to put in place necessary health care services to treat the infected ones. Furthermore, he noted that the demand of ICU service and ventilators have been surging in the country and more and more people were severely down with the flu-like infection. In the press statement, the former Prime Minister has also appealed to the general public to get inoculated at the earliest for he argued that vaccination was the safest way against this deadly infection. This is Janata Bulletin. We'll be right back after a short break. Welcome back after the break. We continue with other national news. The government yesterday confirmed 3,442 new cases of coronavirus across the country. Following the latest round of tests, the total cases of coronavirus in the country have climbed to 303,561, while the number of active cases has increased to 22,434 from the overnight tally of 19,382. According to the Ministry of Health and Population, altogether 277,951 infected persons have recovered from the disease in the country so far. The death toll from coronavirus has climbed to 3,176 following the deaths of 12 more patients yesterday. Nepal is currently among the top 54 countries that have been most affected by the pandemic. 
The USA tops the list with over 32.87 million confirmed cases, followed by India with over 17.62 million cases. Coronavirus has infected more than 148.4 million people across the world and claimed over 3.13 million lives. And now the news from the economic front. Due to the recent surge of coronavirus infections, the number of returnees from foreign employment is increasing as compared to the people leaving the country. According to the Department of Foreign Employment, 51,421 youths have gone abroad with new labor permits in search of employment since March 15, 2020. According to the Coronavirus Crisis Management Center, CCMC, 438,764 people have returned home in the same time period. Most of the returnees are from Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Malaysia, UAE, Kuwait and other countries. According to the CCMC, the highest number of 135,432 Nepalese has returned from UAE. 47,069 have returned from Malaysia, similarly 40,593 from Saudi Arabia, 34,493 from India, 13,138 from Japan, 12,280 from Turkey and 3,337 from Hong Kong and Macau via air travel. A total of 438,764 Nepalese have returned home from 60 countries including China, South Korea, Armenia, Germany, Poland, Canada, Denmark, Maldives, Italy, Sudan, Greece, Spain, Portugal, France, Jordan and South Korea. The Department of Foreign Employment has stated that the number of youths going for foreign employment has decreased due to the, due to the inability to enter the destination countries due to the pandemic. Recently, some destination countries have banned the entry of migrant workers altogether. Time for a short break here at Jonathan Bulletin. Stay tuned for international news. Welcome back and now the international news. Record-breaking coronavirus outbreak that has overwhelmed hospitals and set crematoriums working at full capacity. On Monday, for the fifth straight day, the country set a global daily record of new coronavirus infections. Al Jazeera reported that new variants of the virus continue to spread across the world's most across the world's second most populous country. Life-saving oxygen is in short supply and families are being left on their own to ferry people sick with COVID-19 from hospital to hospital in search for treatment. India has ordered its armed forces to help tackle surging infections as countries including the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany and the United States pledge to send urgent medical aid. India, with a population of 1.3 billion, has an official tally of 17.31 million infections and 195,123 deaths. The World Health Organization chief voiced alarm Monday, saying the organization was rushing to help address the crisis. You're watching Janata Bulletin and now the latest from the world of sports. Zlatan Ibrahimovic is said to be investigated by UEFA over an alleged financial interest in a betting company. According to reports in his native Sweden, the AC Milan striker has broken new rules after becoming a partner in a betting company. UEFA's disciplinary regulations state players should not have a financial interest in betting, BBC reported. Last week, he signed a new contract that will run until after his 14th birthday. A UEFA ethics and disciplinary inspector has been appointed to conduct a disciplinary investigation regarding a potential violation of the UEFA disciplinary regulations by Zlatan Ibrahimovic for having an alleged financial interest in a betting company, a UEFA statement said. We're at the end of Chanata Bulletin and the headlines once again. Government to enforce prohibitory order in Kathmandu Valley, all but essential services to be shut until May 5th. 
All TU exams postponed until further notice. Exams to be held after things return to normalcy. Government confirms over 3,400 new cases of coronavirus. Number of active cases rises above 22,000. World reacts to India's catastrophic COVID-19 surge. Leaders pledge medical aid to the country. And Ibrahimovic investigated in betting probe. The striker breaks UEFA rule. And that's all from the English News Desk for today. You can follow Janata Television and our programs on various social media platforms, including on our website, janatasamachar.com. We urge all our viewers to follow government directives and follow healthy hygienic practices to keep safe from any infection. Keep watching Janata Television. Namaste.